Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to come out here because I was listening to a, a book on the way to work, and it wanted, I wanted to uh, talk to you about the difference between taking ownership or laying blame. And it was very interesting because one of the big learnings from this chapter was taking ownership of your life, whatever it looks like. So taking ownership of your health, taking ownership of your wealth, taking ownership of your relationships, um, but just taking ownerships in general. Uh, ownership, sorry. Uh, ownership, <laughs> ownership in general, in all aspects of your life. And one of the things they pointed out was that it's not the same as taking blame. So it's not like, okay, so you have a conflict with somebody or a conflict in your life that you blame, that you blame yourself for it. Um, more so that you accept the fact that things are shitty and um, what are you gonna do about it from here on? And that would be the difference. Uh, laying blame is blaming somebody for why it happened and not necessarily going anywhere with it. But taking ownership is accepting the fact that things are shitty and what are you going to do about it? And so I come across this a lot, unfortunately, where um, in the industry I'm in because, of course, we're here to help people um, better themselves financially. And so um, I wanted to tell you a story because I wanted to show you um, what maybe not taking ownership of a problem can do, okay? And so this happened a while ago, but I re remember this as if it was yesterday because it still boggles my mind. So I was able to help a client who seemed to be living in her overdraft protection. And I took it upon myself to call her instead of just bouncing whatever it is that was going through her account, I felt the need that, you know what, I, sh I should call this person. They look like um, they're living in their overdraft and they don't necessarily need to. And what I mean by that is um, there was enough money coming in that it was pretty much her spending habits that was causing them to live in their overdraft. And, you know, credit cards maxed out. Anyway, so I position um, her coming in because I felt, you know, I could save you some money. You know, I know it's stressful to live in your overdraft. Um, come and see me. And so in the end... I was basically able to help her and her family save about $1,200 a month. Like that's huge. So basically adding back $1,200 to their cash flow. And I mean, it doesn't really matter how I was able to do that, but basically I suggested that we roll everything, all her debts. So there was a lot more debts outside of, you know, what I saw. And so I was able to convince her that, you know, in order to um, increase your cash flow and therefore even start saving because, you know, a family of two kids, a husband and her, and she didn't work, um, she basically just spent the money. Um, I was able to show her that, you know, you really need to start saving because you don't have anything for a rainy day, let alone, you know, retirement planning. And so I was able to show her that if I added $1,200 back to her wallet, we can take some of that money and even furthermore help her make that grow so that by the time they decide to stop working, they would have um, some money saved up, right? Instead of kind of just living day to day. So I show her this and, you know, obviously my you just couldn't say no to what I was able to position, you know, and still able to budget in food and, and, you know, mortgage and loans, everything that they had to pay. I was still able to put that in, but I was able to uncover another pot of money that her and her family can uh, start using wisely. And so, um, you know, super happy. I was able to not only save them on interest, but save them again and put money back into their pocket. But one of the follow-up appointments that, um, I really wanted to do is make sure, sorry, I'm looking around because, you know, people are around the parking lot and I just don't want them knocking on my window and interrupting me. And I'm talking about my coworkers. So, um, I was, sorry, where was I? Um, super happy and, um, it just made sense for them. Okay. Younger family. So I wanted a follow-up appointment to 
to get them to start using that extra money that we've uncovered to, to work harder for them and so that it just didn't end up something that um, they spent right because that's what got them there in the first place let's be honest um, I saw a need to, to really show her how you know they don't have to live as well as they were living I guess and they didn't have to live on credit because that's what essentially they were doing is they were living on credit so um, she so when I showed her this, you know, um, I told her, I said, let's talk about, you know, what, what, you know, what we can do for you. And like, maybe let's start putting this money away, you know, not, not saying you spend all this money, let's put it away before you spend it. But you know, in my diplomatic Irene way, I told her that it was a good idea to start putting this money away so that we can start saving money. And she refused. She, in fact, I think took offense to it because she said, uh, don't worry, I know how to spend my money or I know how to save my money or um, I know um, what I'm doing. Like, so that was the attitude I got um, from her. And that's probably why I remember this is because it just blew my mind. It was like, I just showed you how to save more money and I cleared it up for you. And you know, you have debts that were, you know, now put into one I've saved you some interest you have twelve hundred dollars more at the end of the month let's do something with this before you get you know you spend it all right and in this process I canceled also some credit that she didn't need and and we probably wouldn't have been able to approve had we not um, canceled her ability to use them again no word of a lie no word of a lie because I really wanted to follow up with her since she felt that she was good no word of a lie, the next month she was back in her overdraft. Now, I suppose that's my fault. I shouldn't have given her back that overdraft, but she she, she needed it. She wanted to keep it, so we left it on there, and she was able to keep it on there, but she was back in her overdraft. And in this case, where she was shown the opportunity to better their situation, because they were obviously drowning, she did not take ownership of it. She depended on the bank to fix it, to fix the problem that she got herself into and her family now is into. And um, not that she blamed me, but I think she took offense to my suggestion. And so um, I, wanted to sh I wanted to come on here to explain that there are good people out there, eh? that people actually do want to help um, we're not just trying to sell a product but in the same breath um, you know I, I kind of realize you know now doing this health and wellness program a lot of people use the reason to not get healthier um, use the reason that they can't afford it and it's it's um it's, it's unfortunate because in in this day and age we can find means whether it's a credit card or whatever it is or taking it out of your RSPs we can find the means to uh, you know go on that vacation or you know buy those fancy shoes or uh, you know I don't know buy new golf clubs I don't know what guys spend their money on anyway so we can find the means to do that but when it comes to our health we can't afford it and and that that to me is alarming. That's just as bad as I am not going to take my money and and build a future for myself so that I'm comfortable when I don't want to work anymore. And so um, I would just I'm not I'm not trying to bash anybody who's used that reason to me. Um, I'm just um, I'm just bringing it up with you because it's a different way of prioritizing your life. Right? In this case where this woman wanted to keep her overdraft protection and use it and not prioritize what her family, sorry, her family's future and her husband's future, financial future, she would rather spend the way she was spending. And that was prioritizing, well, money that she wasn't earning. But anyways, that's a different story. But um, she was prioritizing the money that was coming in to suit her own needs and wants. And as much as that's important to make sure you're happy, you need to start taking ownership for things that have maybe gone wrong. And that in that case, it has gone wrong. And so if you're suffering from something like um, 
you know, being overweight or just having extra pounds or maybe even something where you're just not happy with yourself and it has to do with how, how much you weigh or how you feel in your clothes, do something today. Like we can't look backwards. I get that. We can't look backwards. We don't have that rear view mirror syndrome. We can't look backwards and fix it and lay blame. And I wouldn't encourage you to lay blame. But what we can do is we can take ownership, which starts today. You can take ownership today to make the changes you want to make. Okay. And so for those of you who, who are suffering in silence from things that maybe you know that you've done to yourself, it's not too late. You can change whatever it is that you want to change today. Okay. And so, and that's what's taking ownership. Don't lay blame. There's no point in laying blame, whether it's your fault or somebody else's fault. But what you can do is figure out how you can change today so that you can feel healthier or feel wealthier or whatever it is that you want to change. So that is my spiel today. Um, I see uh, Patrick is watching. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Mirka. Um, thank you so much for jumping on. It's early quarter to nine. I should probably get into the office and, uh, yeah, have a great day guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week and hopefully we have a, a great rest of the week in terms of weather. Uh, not like last week, but anyways, uh, kill it today. Kill it for the rest of the week. I got you always. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.